people who are having severe incidences of short-term memory loss and confusion behind the wheel are getting lost and having difficulty being able to navigate back to their homes or their intended destination, which can be very dangerous. So it's important to have this conversation as quickly as possible, not just the short-term memory loss and getting lost, but also being able to really judge the flow of traffic safely being able to really observe traffic laws and I mean, recognize even traffic stop signs and uh, lights. This is severely impacted by someone's diagnosis over time. And this can just be very dangerous, not only for them, but for anybody in their path. If you're in the passenger side and you're driving with them, if you're scared, <laughs> then you should be having a conversation with them about driving. Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hi, welcome to today's episode of Aging in Style with Lori Williams. Today, we are talking uh, about a very hot topic. This is driving and dementia or Alzheimer's. And when is it time to take the keys away? We get so many calls with people asking that question, not wanting to have that conversation. So today's guest is going to help us with some answers to that and some good ideas and some strategies that we can implement. Today's guest is Tanisha Tyler Carr. She's been with us before. She is the Programs and Services Coordinator with Alzheimer's Association, Dallas and Northeast Texas Chapter. Um, Tanisha has a bachelor's degree in applied behavioral analysis with the minor in dispute resolution at the University of North Texas of Denton. Tanisha has been with the association since 2012, and she works primarily with caregivers and individuals with the diagnosis as a care consultant. And in her role as a consultant, she provides a one-on-one care planning, crisis management, and information and referral for families affected by Alzheimer's disease and other related dementia. So she is the perfect person to help us with this today. Thank you so much, Tanisha. I'm so glad you joined us. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. This topic about driving comes up all the time. And I actually had a conversation yesterday with the family I've been working with. Sweet, sweet daughter. Her dad has dementia and he lives in his own home and he does not want to move. He does not want to stop driving. And yesterday he went for a drive and got lost or he he parked and went into some building and could not find his car. And he was, I, I don't know how long he was searching for his car, but eventually he called the police and they came and they brought him home and they contacted his daughter to let her know that he had lost his car. And so that has motivated her into realizing it is time that something bad could happen to dad. So it's time to really look into that time to maybe make a move with him, but definitely time to give up driving. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about why we need to take the keys away as hard as that is. What are the reasons why we need to take those keys away and have that conversation? Right. Well, I I think it's just really important to really understand when someone has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or another type of dementia, um, you know, eventually this is going to be something that they're just not going to be able to do safely as much as they'd like to. 70% of people who have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or another type of dementia will wander at some point in time. And when we say wandering, that means getting lost or stepping away from their environment without the ability to really safely retrace their steps and get back to their original destination. And this can happen at all stages. It can happen in various ways. Specifically, when we're talking about driving, we see these silver alerts all the time. People who are having severe incidences of short-term memory loss and confusion behind the wheel are getting lost. 
and having difficulty being able to navigate back to their homes or their intended destination, which can be very dangerous. So it's important to have this conversation as quickly as possible, uh, not just a short-term memory loss and getting lost, but also uh, being able to really judge the flow of traffic safely, being able, be able to really observe traffic laws and I mean, recognize even traffic stop signs and uh, lights. This is severely impacted by someone's diagnosis over time. And this can just be very dangerous, not only for them, but for anybody in their path. Mm -hmm. And we've talked recently on the show about signs to look for, red flags. And, you know, some of the things we talked about were dings and dents on the car, just be like the mirror being knocked off, the garage, maybe having hit the garage. What other things do you recommend they look for as red flags that may be driving something we need to talk about? <laughs> Well, definitely uh, getting very lost in familiar places where it's just really taking them a long time to navigate, to go visit a friend's house or go to the store, just go to different things that they do, go to work, different activities that are on the day-to-day -day routine, mm -hmm. having trouble really navigating, getting to and from, it's taking a longer time. Also just increase anxiety and confusion when we're in traffic, especially rush hour traffic or busy intersections that can be very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's where you're going to start seeing dings and dents and, you know, maybe an increase incidence of accidents, obviously driving under the speed limit, severely driving over the speed limit, coming into in oncoming traffic, driving on the wrong side of the road, driving in another person's incoming lane, like things mm -hmm. like that definitely are signs, but and also definitely increase anxiety and trouble navigating the flow of traffic. To Absolutely. where if you're in the passenger side and you're driving with them. If you're scared, <laughs> then you should be having a conversation with them about driving. Exactly. And that's one of the things we suggested is uh, go for a drive with them. Just, you know, go down to the store and you don't have to say, mom, I'm going to assess your driving. Just say, hey, let's run to the grocery and, and you drive and then just kind of see how things are looking. So I think that's really, really important. We also talk about why it is so hard to have that conversation. And, and it it is because, you know what, they're your parents and nobody wants to go to their big, strong dad and say, dad, you know, you've been driving for 60, 70 years, whatever, but you you really need to give up the keys. Nobody wants to have that conversation. And, and you know, as we've talked about, it's that last piece of independence to be able to drive and take yourself wherever you need to go. So it just makes it that much more difficult. So what are some ways that we can start those conversations? And I know that on your website, there's a great um, site to go to. So I want you to tell mm -hmm. us about that. You referenced the website. The website is alz.org forward slash driving. So if you go to alz.org, forward slash driving. It'll take you to our dementia and driving website. And it does just that. Like you just asked me how to have that conversation. This page goes over how to have that conversation, planning ahead, signs of unsafe driving, what to do if the conversation goes well, what to do if the conversation doesn't go well. And then also what's really great on this website is that you have four videos that are probably about five to six minutes that you can watch of families in different situations that really have this conversation. And I think it's great because these are all different situations, features a person who's living with a diagnosis and talking to their children um, in the early stages about a driving contract and just concerns as time progresses so that they're willing to give up the keys. That's obviously idea, but you know, it doesn't always happen, but talks about that also to married couples talking to their spouses and then also an adult child talking to their parent about giving up the keys. So they're great, different scenarios. They're very, very well constructed. And I think they're great tips. And then also we talked about, I referenced a driving contract with this website. If you go to it, you can actually download a driving contract that you and your family can actually kind of divvy through. And it's just an agreement between you and your loved one that when and if that time comes that they should 
stop driving, um, that is, this is a signed document that says they're going to willingly give up the keys. And this can be documented and notarized. So lots of great tips. So mm-hmm. it's a great website about really just having that conversation as early as possible, planning ahead, making sure you have examples. Um, and then also being willing to have this in a casual place where you and this person can talk alone, talk freely, both express their concerns. They express their emotions about just this decision altogether. And just knowing that you're going to have to have this conversation several times Mm -hmm. before you get to an actual plan. And I think it's important also, like you said, planning ahead. And then if there are siblings to bring everyone in on the same page, all watch these videos together, rather than trying to have this conversation with parents without a plan that could go in a bad way quickly. <laughs> you know, if, if <laughs> one child is saying, oh, dad doesn't need to give up driving. And the other one is like, yeah, he really does. So I think it makes sense to bring everyone in, bring siblings, because there's with all families, there are dynamics. So it's good to have everyone on the same page. And I just, I love this. These resources are excellent. However, if they're a little further advanced, you haven't had these conversations, what mm-hmm. are some things that people can do if they're really, you know, parents are mad at them, they do not want to give up driving. I usually say get a doctor involved, but what, what do you advise people to do in that type of a situation? Well, in that situation, I would get a, a doctor involved. I mean, or someone that is a person of authority. Sometimes people arrange a meeting with the doctor. They'll arrange a meeting with like maybe a, an attorney, an elder care attorney, or they may even arrange for them to have a driving evaluation at the DMV and have the DMV be the one to uh, deliver the driving evaluation and tell them if they score low enough, let them know you're not, we're not going to be able to renew your license. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to be able to drive. So there are different alternatives. If you have to go to that level, you know, some people are very creative, especially with a persistent driver who is just not going to give up the keys. Some people have taken you know, it all the way to the extreme to maybe disabling the vehicle, saying mm-hmm. it needs to be serviced and then disabling the vehicle. So that person is no longer driving, removing the vehicle from the premises and parking it somewhere else. You know, there's so many different things when you get into that level. But I would definitely always try to involve first working in levels, definitely a legal professional, elder care attorney, speaking to a physician that can write a driving order or even referring them to the DMV to get a driving evaluation. Okay, excellent tips. The other thing I do want to bring up is the legalities involved. And um, I've told this story before because it's a story that very much affected me early on with working with seniors. A very, very nice gentleman I had worked with. He was an only child. He lived in the Dallas area. His parents lived outside Austin, kind of in the country, and they did not want to move closer to him. They did not want to move into senior living. The dad had dementia and it was pretty far advanced. The mother did not. However, she allowed the dad to drive because he always drove. That's what he did. And unfortunately, one day he pulled out on one of these little farm roads in front of an 18 wheeler. They were hit and they both were killed instantly. The driver was, was, I don't believe he was injured, but you know, he has to live with that. The son has to live with that. What a horrible thing to happen. And, you know, it was awful. I had called to just check on his parents as I, you know, did every now and then, you know, how are they doing? Are they ready to consider moving? And he told me what had happened. And it was just such an awful tragedy. And then in in thinking of that, I mean, you know, I don't know. I didn't ask, you know, was the estate sued? I would assume probably so. And what are legal ramifications if you know your dad or your mom, they have dementia and they have a diagnosis and they continue to drive? Well, it's important to know that, you know, there are going to be legal ramifications. Obviously, we don't know what their legal setup was. We don't know if, you know, uh, Obviously, someone is going to have to pay for damages or, you know, in that situation, you know, obviously, I would have to consult with the legal professional to really know what the consequences are for that type of situation. Mm -hmm. But realistically, 
if you are a person who's driving diagnosis or not with, with, with dementia and you are behind the wheel and you cause an accident or someone's hurt, seriously injured, or possibly property damage or someone is deceased, you still have uh, legal accountability. You know, that doesn't negate your legal obligations and, you know, ultimately criminal investigation that will incur. So it's important to know that it's important to be preventable and to know that, you know, we don't want our loved ones to be in a situation where they have to deal with a criminal charge or, you know, property damage or any type of legal settlement against them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those things definitely are still truly possible. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, number one, what you need to do is be proactive and go to the website and make a plan and get everyone on board with this plan. It's not easy. We've talked about that. It's not going to be an easy conversation to have, but it's something that that needs to happen. So, Tanisha, I appreciate you so much being back on the show and sharing this information. Can you share that website with us again for the driving? Sure. That website is alz.org forward slash driving. Um, And it's our dementia and driving website. And it's a great, great resource because unfortunately in this situation uh, that you mentioned, you know, we want to prevent something like that from happening, but it's important that you share that because people need to know that, you know, these things can happen and uh, without intervention, you know, these things can happen and it can be devastating for everyone. So we just want everyone to be safe. And if you're in this situation and you really need help on how to have this conversation and really even need referrals as to what to, you can do to be preventative, go to alz.org forward slash driving. You can also call our helpline, our 24-7 helpline, where you can talk to an Alzheimer's staff like myself that can help you navigate through this at one 800 272 3900. Great. Excellent information. Thank you so much, Tanisha. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for having me. Sure. And all the information with the website and everything will be on my website as well as on the podcast information. So you can reach Tanisha and reach this website and information. And my website is lauriewilliams-seniorservices.com. Thanks again for listening, guys. We will talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. 